If you're new to the channel, I have spent the last several months doing reviews of all the incredible places I was blessed to visit on my first ever trip to Israel. In my last video, I revealed my top 10 favorite sites. Beyond these favorite sites, there were also moments that I had that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Some of these moments will overlap with my favorite sites, but these are moments that I had an experience either physically, emotionally, or spiritually that I would love to share with you. So join me now as I share my top 10 moments I experienced in Israel. Number 10, finishing a 10K race. I am not much of an athletic type, but on our last day, one of the things we came to Israel to do was run in the Jerusalem Marathon. I use the term run loosely because I walked most of it. But why this makes the list is because when I woke up on this morning, I was not feeling well. And I had also been struggling with painful plantar fasciitis in my left foot. So with the inclines and declines of many of the stone paved streets of the old city, it was definitely a physical challenge for me. By the grace of God, I was able to persevere and complete my first ever 10K in just over an hour and a half. I know to you runners that doesn't mean much, but to this out of shape papa, it was an accomplishment. It wasn't until I got back home to the U.S. that I found out the reason I was under the weather. I participated and completed a 10K while suffering with COVID. Number nine, walking up the Mount of Olives. The evening before the 10K, I decided to walk about an hour from the hotel to a spot on top of the Mount of Olives. This was an amazing moment for me because not only was I doing something Jesus and his disciples did frequently, not only did I get to sit and watch the sunset over the city, but I got to just spend quiet time with the Lord and reflect back to everything we saw and did on this trip. At one point, I felt God say in my heart, you had a great time here, now what are you going to do about it? This is where the idea of making video reviews of my trip using the scriptures was born. And before I went back to the hotel, I got this amazing shot of the old city at nighttime. Number eight, singing inside the church of St. Anne. Located next to the Pool of Bethesda, the Church of St. Anne was built in 1138 AD. Many come to St. Anne's Church to sing because of the acoustics. I do like some contemporary Christian worship music, but I really miss singing the old hymns. I feel a stronger sense of worship when singing many of the hymns I grew up with, and singing Amazing Grace with the group was just a wonderful moment. Number seven, exploring the Temple Mount. Our tour group did not take us to the Temple Mount, so the nine of us from our church went on a free day we had. It was initially weird for me at first because I'm not a Muslim, so seeing the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque didn't do anything for me spiritually. But walking along the Temple Mount, knowing the Bible history that took place here prior to the Muslims gaining control, and the future prophetic events that will take place here, like the Third Jewish Temple being built, and Jesus' return when he will touch down just to the east of the Temple Mount on the Mount of Olives, I quickly became in awe. Number six, standing in the Sea of Galilee. One of the hotels that we stayed in was along the coast of the Sea of Galilee. On the second morning of our tour around Israel, I decided to get up early, watch the sunrise, and stand in the Sea of Galilee. This is the same sea where Jesus calmed the storm. This is the same sea where Jesus, and for a little bit, Peter, walked on the water. This is one of the few locations that is not up for debate. Miracles took place right here in this body of water, and I got to stand in it for a few moments. This was the first big emotional moment for me on this wonderful trip. Number five, drinking water at En Gedi. Now, if you watched my previous video of my top 10 favorite sites, you know En Gedi was special to me already. 
and perhaps not the cleanest idea, but I wanted to drink some of the water from the spring that David and his men would have definitely drank from when hiding from King Saul. Oh, the springs of Engedi. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The water was good, refreshing, and I did not get sick from it. It was not just amazing to see and walk through Bible history, but here to basically taste Bible history was just awesome to me. Number four, walking through Hezekiah's tunnel. Similar to En Gedi, walking through Hezekiah's tunnel was a special moment for me because we were literally walking through Bible history. But unlike En Gedi, where we don't know the exact location of the cave David and his men hid in, here, 2,700 years ago, King Hezekiah commanded two groups of men to chisel through this limestone to redirect Gihon Spring into the city. There is no doubt that this biblical event took place here. Hezekiah's tunnel is probably one of the best physical examples of seeing the Bible come alive. Now, those who know me know I'm not a crier, but these final three moments are moments I actually shed tears. Number three, seeing Jerusalem for the first time. Prior to hitting Jerusalem, we saw so much. It was incredible. Everything so far was above and beyond my expectations. Then we drove up the Mount of Olives to get our first good look at Jerusalem, and I teared up. You see pictures online or on TV, and it's cool. But to be physically standing here, seeing the old city for the first time, was so fascinating. So much Bible history happened all over this city, and the fact that Jerusalem will be front and center in the future that has been prophesied in the Bible was overwhelming for me. Number two, communion at the garden tomb. If you have not seen my review of the garden tomb and the holy sepulcher, I go into why I do not believe this garden tomb is where Jesus was laid after his death on the cross. But that does not take away from the experience I had. As we sat here and took communion, I could not help but get emotional in this spiritual moment. Knowing the vast amount of sins I have committed and thinking on the fact that all of those sins were placed on Jesus when he was on the cross where he died for me, knowing how many times I would mess up, I absolutely deserve hell and eternity apart from God. But Jesus loved me so much to die for me and offer me eternal life. And this is not just for me, it's for everyone who believes in Jesus as the Savior. Jesus is truly the greatest gift you could ever accept. And now for my top moment I had in all of Israel. Number one, my Jordan River baptism. No, this is not the area where Jesus would have been baptized by John the Baptist. That would have been further south, closer to the Dead Sea. But this site, just south of the Sea of Galilee, offered baptisms in the Jordan River, and I jumped at this opportunity. I accepted Jesus as my Savior when I was a small child, and shortly after that, I was baptized. But after living so many years, even as a Christian adult, with making so many bad choices, too many times choosing my wants, my desires, and my way over God's, that for the last few years I had been having this growing desire to get baptized again. Please understand, baptism does not save you. Only faith in Jesus and what he did for us can save you. If baptism could save you, then it would be an action we could all accomplish on our own. But the Bible is clear, you can only be saved through faith, not works. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Getting baptized is an expression of my faith in Jesus, just like a wedding ring is supposed to be an expression of love that you have for your spouse. I chose to get rebaptized in the Jordan River, not for some attention-seeking performance to post on social media or to impress people in my life, but I chose to get rebaptized to reaffirm my commitment and love to Jesus and to tell the world that after all these years, I still choose Jesus over everything else this world has to offer. This concludes my top 10 moments I experienced in Israel. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've been to Israel before, please share your top moments you've experienced in the comments below. But until next time, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.